Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst of Store Switzerland. Thank you for joining us. You know, the organizations have generally given up on the concept of consolidation. We now live in a, a multi-cloud, multi-environment world, and that creates several challenges that uh, we need to address, for, especially from a data protection and a data mobility standpoint. Joining me on the light board to discuss this is Sabaya Sundram. He is the VP of Products at Haiku. Thanks for joining us today, Sabaya. Thank you very much, George. So let's talk about this a little bit. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what the environment looks like today. Absolutely, when you talk to customers today, on an average customers have between four to five clouds. That's very common in every customer we talk sure. to today. The challenge which we see from customers is that, first thing is that they've given up on the traditional world, as you said, people try to use to consolidate. Now they right. said that's very hard to do because you have to live with the different clouds. Right. The key thing is that, how could you, number one, as IT, you're responsible for protecting the data, right? right? So the key thing is that data protection. That's one thing they want to make sure actually happens. Yeah, and of course, now that we've got, you know, it used to be hard enough when everything was in one data center, now that's spread across all these different data centers, technically, right? Absolutely. That, see, that's a, one of the way people actually always think in terms of, what can I do, what kind of solutions do I pick, right? A lot of people try to, it, traditionally, the vendors, the way people have approached this thing is saying, let's actually try to come up with one single solution across all the across all the clouds. Sure. Sounds like a great thing, and absolutely, we all would like to do that. To accomplish that, the vendors, the way they have approached this problem is that they'll come up with the least common denominator across all these clouds. Right. They say because that's the easiest way to accomplish the whole task. Sure. Right? That's number one. Number two, they've also traditionally these solutions have been built in the classic. A data center, I yeah. should say, a legacy data center. Yeah, the on-premise model. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And where applications were very controlled in the way they were spun up. In the world of cloud, it's not the case. It's very agile, and you can spin up a cloud anytime you want and shut it down anytime you want. Right. The solutions have to be adaptable to that particular model. Right. That's okay. that's a big part. The third challenge, I think, which I see is a lot of the solutions in the industry today is that they're all built in the model where the world revolves around data protection. Right. As a vendor in the data protection space, I like that. Yeah. But in reality, that's not the case. Right. right? Most customers, in because they're looking at multiple solutions, and it's driven by the business, not by the individual IT person doing it. Right. Because it's driven by the business, you want to make sure any solution you pick is intuitive and usable by the business, not by the IT guy who just thinks the entire world is around data protection. Right, yeah. So that's, that's a big thing, and those are challenges which I think people have to address, and any solution customer picks has to pick in each one of the cases. Right, and, and, and your guys' um, uh, software is designed specifically for each platform or environment it runs on, right? Uh, great point, uh, George. The key, the way, one of Haiku's philosophy is to make sure that we build purpose-built for each of the clouds we choose. Right. What do we mean by purpose-built? People say, what's special about it? In when we say purpose-built, it leverages every platform you choose, be it Nutanix, VMware, GCP, or any cloud. Mm -hmm. They all have their secret sauce in one of them. Right. The question is that the solutions you choose, are they leveraging the secret sauce in each one of the platforms? That's the key thing. Right. That's when you get the best return on investment. And so by when you say secret sauce, what you're really talking about is the sort of the capabilities within the environment, like maybe snapshots and replication and other storage management features that they might have. Absolutely, George. Every platform you choose actually has a lot of built-in capabilities, mm -hmm. and our software is entirely built for the native platform. Right. Because it's built of native, number one, it leverages the technology capabilities you mentioned. Right. Now, number two, it mimics the same terminology, look and feel of each of the platform. Right. That way, when you're a Nutanix administrator or a GCP administrator, you don't have to learn a new language and a new terminology, a new look and feel. Right. It feels like what you're used to in any other service you're doing. That's the big benefit, and it makes it extremely simple to adopt in a customer environment. Well, and I would think it would also, uh, backup guys would be uh, very good with that too, because it, that allows me to delegate, right? It allows me to Correct. say, hey, to my Nutanix, I, you guys back up Nutanix, and, and here, look, it looks just like what you're already using. Totally, I mean, yeah. that's one of the big benefits. Uh, IT is moving, as you clearly pointed out, they're moving away from saying, I got to own everything to saying, I will be the guy who makes sure it's all compliant but I don't have to really do all the work. I'll let the end user yeah. take care of it. Yeah, and this guy's Absolutely. probably better qualified to know what's going on in that environment anyway. Absolutely. Anyways. All right, so what's the second thing? That's a great point. So first one is having data protection. Right. The second thing comes down to these clouds are great. Mm -hmm. Every cloud is chosen for a particular workload. Sure. Fantastic. 
the thing what happens is that things do change. Right. What used to be great in on-prem right now probably has to go to the cloud. Right. Or the other way around. There are customers right now bringing back from the cloud right. onto on-prem. Yeah, it happens. When things like that happen, you want to make sure you have the right data mobility available in your infrastructure, right? And when we think in terms of data mobility, people think saying, oh, it's just moving the bits and bytes from one to the other. Mm -hmm. As we all know, that's more than that. The reason is that at the end of the day, what you're moving from infrastructure A to B is the critical application. Right. An important aspect of any solution a customer chooses has to make sure, number one, is it application consistent data which is being protected between the infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're making the data mobile, you got to make sure it's application consistent where you were and where it goes, it actually goes in an application consistent right. fashion. Yeah, that makes that's sense. an important aspect and I think that's something we do. One other point I want to mention from an application perspective, especially in the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's agile and people can spin up applications on the fly, right. traditional data protection solutions don't think in them that term. They all think in terms of, oh, it's a very planned, methodical delivery of application. When it comes to cloud, that's not the case. The guy decides to spin up, boom, he just right. the two commands, he gets it run. That's one of the reasons the software, data protection software, has to be dynamic enough to understand what applications are getting spun up, automatically protected properly, and then bring it up and make sure it's consistently moved when you move. That's a really good point. So you're able to detect a new application starting and That's add right. it to a protection group. Absolutely. Very interesting. And do it very application consistent fashion. Gotcha. All right, so what's the third thing? The third thing is around how do you do, make it disaster recovery ready, right? Okay. Uh, disaster recovery. So in the case of disaster recovery, the question here is that we are trying to do between clouds. People say, guys, I'm running in the cloud, why do I need to do DR? Right. We all wish there was very clean and there's mother nature doesn't get into your business, but it does happen. Sure. There are times, not just because of the cloud going down or anything like that, it's because networks are sometimes being cut between organizations, things right. like that happen. Yeah. You gotta make your thing disaster, what I call disaster proofing. Right, Something sure. actually happens. The key thing here is that it is, Again, from a disaster recovery perspective, people should think in terms of not just bringing the infrastructure up and running, because that's what traditional IT thinks. It's bringing the application between the sites okay. in a very consistent fashion. Gotcha. That's what you got to be able to do. That's number one. Okay. Number two, I would tell you from a disaster recovery is that people have to think in terms of, is it flexible enough for the different infrastructure? Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Between your on-prem and the cloud, and between clouds, the pipe you have the network pipe you actually have might be different between different infrastructure. Some could be robo sites, can be main sites. Your disaster recovery solution has to be adaptable to the different infrastructure. Right. So application consistency, disaster recovery, and the third thing is, is it simple? Right. As we always believe, the KISS principle. And yes. Kind of that. Okay, that makes sense. So, I, I, so by, I think you've made a really good case here. I, I, I love the idea of purpose built, but at some point, somebody's got to kind of have a, a, a central view into all this. How, how does that look? Excellent point. So as we said, Every cloud is managed by the different people managing the cloud. Right. Now the question is, IT wants to get a global view of how things are going across the board. Okay. That's where Haiku Protege comes into picture. Okay. The Haiku Protege is a layer which goes across the infrastructure. Okay. It is a very thin layer, it goes across the infrastructure, and it's a service, it's a fully managed service. Okay. And it gets a view of what's going on in each one of those clouds, which the customer gets to see. Okay, so that makes sense. It gives you a consolidated view of your entire data protection environment okay. and your disaster recovery readiness across the board. So that's the big benefit of using Haiku Protege. That's number one, right? It's consolidation across the board. Actually, I can write it right. <laughs> so that's the one is consolidation. Uh -huh. Once you do the consolidation, then the question is, now we talked about data mobility and disaster recovery. Right. Can, that's where it comes down to saying, it's, I call it data mobility, and sorry, two, and three is disaster readiness. Okay. So it, each one of those layers, you have the data protection, Haiku data protection purpose built solution. Right. And Haiku Protege brings the, all of them together in a consolidated fashion provides you disaster recovery and the data mobility which you require. So it, does it also do, so it gives me that view and does it, so does it orchestrate that mobility and disaster recovery part? That's exactly right. Okay. So because each one of these technologies are built, purpose built, now when you migrate between one to the other, mm -hmm. you should actually understand the different changes which have to happen and that's where our protege brings the whole thing together. Okay, so then in a deployment model, I could delegate the data protection responsibilities to each of these individual, uh, you know, specialists if you will, and to me as the, if you will, backup guy, I could sit on top with Protege making sure everything is in compliance. Spot on. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense. 
All right, so, uh, so Maya, I think you've made a really good case here for this. I, I, I got to tell you, I like the, I really like the concept of purpose-built things to get things done. I think it's just easier and more practical. But adding this layer of protege on, I think, really helps because at some level you need to have somebody responsible for this stuff. Where, where can people get more information? Absolutely. If people go to haiku.com, okay. we actually have a great overview of what Protege does for them. Okay. And the, the simplest thing I tell customers is that it's very simple to try in your environment. It's all of them are pretty much services. Turn it on, try it out, and get a, give us a feel, and then you you see the value. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ms. George. So there you have it. What I really like here is this concept of purpose-built uh, backup solutions and data protection solutions. I think that that's just going to be easier for people to adopt in just much more real world, honestly. And, but you do need this layer, this uh, what, what Haiku calls uh, protege, to be able to make sure that you're in compliance uh, with the policies and, and uh, commitments that you have had set at an organizational level, as well as the ability to move data and also execute disaster recovery. I'm George Crump, Lead Angel Store Switzerland. Have a great day.